Okay. Uh, sorry, I calmed down a bit because the film ran out, but um, we'll start it again. Okay. I just kick his door like that, you know, he's just to say, well, fuck you, you know, if you live in this classic house or whatever, you can kick my friggin' bite and call me every name under the sun. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did to you, mate. Maybe I walked in your driveway and I shouldn't, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if, I've only been here a year and I still don't understand where I am exactly. So anyway, I go off, I walk out of his driveway and I'm walking away with my bike. I hear screaming again and the sun's come out. So uh, I kind of figured it's the sun, you know, this guy. <laughs> and he had like this old green Harrington jacket from like back in the days of skinheads in London and everything. And all these sort of things, these flashbacks, you know what I mean? Crazy old man, the next skinhead. Uh, oh man, you know, I just got knocked out in the fucking summer last year by this crazy Russian and Gypsy. Ain't gonna happen again. I have my gloves on. I have my fucking bling bling gloves on. And I'm not. I've been wearing this pretty much since that Russian guy, but that's just because in Liverpool. I got frets, I was going to have my fingers broken and um, and death frets and fingers chopped off and that. So since then I've worn these things and it's <laughs> to show people I don't really want to hit them with it. But if they're going to come with, with a pair of flat fucking bush clippers or something and we're going to cut your fingers off, okay, I'm going to use this and I don't care, Judge, you know what I mean? This is my insurance. So anyway, I had these ones <laughs> and this guy that and his son there and I thought, oh, fuck this, you know, I, okay. These two ain't gonna get me. What the fuck now? And the son goes, hey, wait a minute. And this one goes, <laughs> and I say, listen, mate, I'm, fu like, I'm fucking English, okay? I don't understand him. I don't understand you. I don't know what your problem is. And then, he, you know, I'm trying to explain to the son that this old guy's been screaming at me. But the son don't want to listen. Obviously, it's his dad, and his dad's right. And, you know, I can, I can understand that psychology about it. But I'm still trying to say to the son, look, I don't put up with this sort of shit. I've got a camera. I've got this freaking three months. Well, I've got this out, and I said, "Look, I'm going to take this photograph. I'm going to take your fucking photograph. You don't stop fucking me. I'm going to put it straight on the fucking net." And the son says to me, "That's illegal. You can't put people's photographs on the net without that." I said, "That's my insurance because the police ain't going to fucking help me. So if I get your photograph and anything happens to me, someone will get you back." And he didn't like that. You know, he's tired of all this crazy stuff. You're in Germany now, be German or go back to Britain or whatever. And the old guy screaming to me in Swedish, every kind of name you can think of. So in the end, I just went back to London, you know, I went back to fucking Ramsgate, you know. Fuck you, motherfucker, fuck your fucking ass, you fucking hit the worst. Every fucking word I could think of, what I can remember from my life, from having nigga calls to me and pooping face, shit face, everything. Well, you know, I've got my whole arsenal of weapons with words as well, so I'm hitting those two with it. And I'm walking up the street and I, the whole neighborhood heard it. And I didn't care. I got them to flame and I told her what happened. And she, she called the cops. We went straight to the police station. Okay? And I'd already printed out a statement, typed it all out, and put these guys' photos on the, on the net within an hour. They was already up on MySpace and it was on SoundClick. And it was still in my phone. We went to the cop station. I gave him the statement. I printed out what happened. And the cop looked at it. He asked us what happened. And um, I'm not going to say who he was, but I'm going to say the cop. He didn't take me very seriously. You know, it's like, uh, you know, he looked at my glass and said, what's this? I said, I'm an artist. But by the end of the interview, and by us talking with him, it seemed like you know, he didn't give a fuck. So I told him, as I stood up, I said, listen, mate, I do the same kind of job as you do, just as dangerous. I play in the street, but I have to face danger, okay? And that's what this is about. And I walked out. We walked out of the room. We walked out of the cop station. So, we didn't hear nothing from this after that. No. <laughs> I'm acting, sorry. But I'm being, you know, just acting and, and the real deal. And the same thing. I walk, we walked out of the police station and we went back to our life. You know, and this is a couple of months ago, this happened. And, um... Yeah, I made a joke about these two characters, you know, I've got one of them, you know, he's calling me Schwartz, I got back to England, and the other one saying to me, you do not put our mail in our letterbox properly, you know what I mean? It's just so crazy, my ears. <laughs> 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 in the States, they fucking throw it in the garden, what do you want? I throw it in your fucking roof, and it's not good enough in your mailbox, but... <laughs> I, put, I wrote all kind of crazy stuff about these two, and in it I just took their photographs off the net because it didn't seem to me that they was that. It just, just a couple of them were crazy, you know, a couple of crazy people. I made enough jokes about them. It's over, finished. <laughs> we get a fucking letter through the mailbox about a month ago 
I've got to pay him 600 fucking euros <laughs> for telling him to fuck you. And I've got to pay some other bill to some secretary or whatever to, for printing that out or whatever. <laughs> and I looked at Sue, you know what? We had a big argument around that time, you know, because this upset me so much. We were both in tears. And I'm, I'm being serious to her because where I come from, something like this, and to get 600 euros, fine. After what these two crazy, I had to. Three times I had to defend myself because they were coming around me and the old guy's coming up to me like he's going to kick me. And I've heard from half of Ehrenberg that this old guy's been fighting people his whole life. He likes to fight. He's nuts. <laughs> he just likes to argue with people and knock them down or whatever. Some old guy was in front of him when he was driving and, and he got out of the car, the old guy, and he knocked him to the ground. This, what, this is what I hear from the street and from the neighbours and from Flame. So, I wasn't going to let that happen that day. And because of that, I've got 600 euros. For, no, that doesn't make sense. I didn't reply to that call. I just, I just sent the facts. So I, I've cooled down a bit again. Okay. Um, a month's gone by and nothing happened. Then we get this other. Oh yeah, sorry. I faxed, I faxed this letter from this court to Flame's cousin, who's a lawyer who represented me in the tubing and thing. And I um, haven't had a reply as yet. Now we get this other letter about two weeks ago. And um, was it two weeks ago? And uh, now there's another court case, but this is in Bobbingham on the 28th that I'm supposed to go to. So uh, this caused me and the missus, we often argue, it's no joke, but this caused a big problem. I think from that day when we got this letter up until now, you know, it caused a big argument that day, a lot of tears, upset or whatever. In the end, I tore this letter up and I said, listen, for this shit what's happened to me, I'm not going to go to that court case. They can come and fucking take me from the flat and if they come and try and take me, they're going to have to shoot me because I'm going to put up a hell of a fight because this is wrong and this is not justice in the democracy that I come from. So that's the point I will make as an artist. I'm just a fucking artist here and if I do a, do a job on a Thursday putting newspapers in someone's mailbox and then suddenly I've got to defend my life and I've got to take 600 euros on top of that. It's madness. I'm sorry, you want to be mad with me? I'm going to be fucking mad because that's crazy. So, that's the point I'm making here. This court case is coming up on the 28th. But don't expect to see me there. If you want, you can have the President of the United States there or the Queen of England. I've written to Buckingham Palace, the CIA, MI5, you know, about crazy shit that's happening. So, don't expect me to be there, but some of my other representatives will be there. You've got that. The 28th, it's just nonsense. He should pay me 600 euros for making me have to defend myself. I mean, what the hell? I'm just delivering papers. <laughs> okay. I, we don't have that job anymore. We lost that job now. Because after that, I refused to go up to his house every first day and put that paper in the mailbox. It said Flame did it. Sometimes her son did it. I know that's not supposed to be legal, but sometimes we both couldn't do it because we had to work. So the son did it sometimes. A couple of times, we actually forgot. We're human. <laughs> it's not like we sat at home and said, OK, let's not do it in the clinic's house. You know, we didn't care about him anymore. But sometimes we forgot his house because I didn't want to go there and she didn't want to go there. So it's two times. It's two times. And now, because of that, he complained to the company that delivered the papers and we lost the job. And we lost the job six weeks ago, around about that. And after six weeks, I owe rent now because that job helped me. You understand? That job helped me pay the rent. And now we lost that because of that fucker. Now I'm in debt with Flame a little bit. So that makes me mad. And that gives me all more reason not to go to this court on the 28th. If I go to that and have this Mickey Mouse judge that believes his story and the other Mickey Mouse judge that wrote the 600 out in the beginning because this guy's Mr. Connect and he's got a fucking shop that his wife runs called Connect or whatever and he's probably some local old gangster thinks he's a gangster. Listen mate, where I come from, gangsters would eat you. They'd eat your fucking eyeballs. So don't try and play gangster with me, motherfucker. <laughs> and you know what, Mr. Connect? Fuck you. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Okay.